in this top lane. So Sme eyes on Smeb again. He does have a top lane Riven win this season. He is going to be great at cleaning up after the poke. So let's get into this game. Very exciting draft phase. Execution heavy. Who can pull it up? We all know how much damage that empowered Q can do. Smeb actually has used all of his dashes, and Evelyn is here. We've seen the damage trades. Arrow does a lot of damage early, and Smeb is going to fall. The first blood just overextended at the wrong time. Had used all three charges of the broken wing. They should know Fixer's up there. Oh, this is so close. The Score is there. There we go. Flash body slam. There's it. Can someday get his ult off? No. Overheats immediately. Score on the run. Score just going to die. As someday the, 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 or the warding here on the top side of the map just so thorough. Oh, okay, wow. gonna take, oh, goodbye. Score's presence on Evelyn. She's strong. She does have those intangibles. But when teams play so smartly around them, although here we go. Missed Looking charm. to see the solo kill. And there's the follow-up. Nagbe gonna fall, but so will Kuro to the ignite. And that missed CC, and that's gonna keep the poke on right now. This is great formation. Uh, the Karma, the Gragas. Are they gonna go for it though? Chain of Corruption. There's the Agony's embrace. Not a great one, but there we go. Sub damage coming through. Whirling Death takes down Gorilla. He gets. The cash in on the adoration stack, so Arrow getting something in return for that turret going down. They're still sieging Evelyn ultimate was because he couldn't find the right angle. It's, Great setup. It's the laning support strategy of only having one ward from your trinket, so you human ward, chains of corruption, big burst damage, and just assassinated by... Really not with much to clear these waves yet. Lots of damage though. And will we be able to stop it? Score finds an angle. There's the equalizer going down. Whirling Death rips through the team. Nagne low. There's an explosive cast. And there is a double kill for Curl with a single piercing arrow lined up by the Gragas ultimate. Well done. And Smeb just gets the fight. Wasn't involved whatsoever. Now can just chase away members. Uh, available even with the rumble the Zed makes sense in terms of damage. Score is flanking, but it's gonna be spotted by a pink ward. Oh, they have and to honestly, go in on this. Yeah. They have to, but will they get anything from it? There's a tether, there's the chain of corruption, and there is a very dead Evelyn as a giant bottle of champagne crushes KT's hopes in this game. Usually something for celebration, but it's definitely <laughs> only for well, Ku. Yeah, Ku said it's a Ku celebration. Works for them. I mean, this is the last thing I expected from this series is it was a convincing 2-0 from Ku, but honestly, unless they make a colossal mistake, it's another game where KT, okay, they haven't picked quite as poorly as in game one, but they're just catching skill shots once again. They kind of for, have to force a poke. Wow, they're just going to go for it. They have so much damage. Smeb, of course, not a tank top laner, has a lot of damage himself. This is a potential turnaround point. Scores milling around, hasn't got flash They're going to go for it. There's the teleport coming in. Whirling Death not going to be there for the steal. TP canceled. There's Gorilla. Flashing forward for the tether. Kuro wants it, he lands the chain, and there's the rest of the poke follow through. Score gets demolished as he finds himself straight in the middle of the Ku Tigers composition. KT were in a bind. They didn't have flash available in score for even the most opportunistic of steals. Someday couldn't commit because he needs to clear the super minions. So they can bring up a Baron buffed up super minion wave and honestly just try and poke KT out of this series. Yeah, they're setting up right now. There's not really much that KT can do about this. Pretty much nothing at the moment, actually, unless they hit some insane equalizer. Nagne on the periphery, poking forward. There's Smev right in the mix with this ribbon, chasing everyone back to the fountain as the rest of his team goes through their wrecking ball formation of just destroying these turrets. And now we have the siege onto the Nexus. That's gonna be it. Nothing they can do, and Ku with early game power spikes, the Varus Corky in both games plays their win conditions beautifully. KT didn't really have any win conditions in game one, had some in game two, but Ari once again just isn't able to make anything happen. We talked about the fact that Varus versus Ari just turned into a farm fest. Ari tried to get her roams off with Evelyn, but score.